right. All praise is due to Allah. We are before you once again. My name is Brother Zebulon from the Nation of Islam. We're blessed to be able to do another video. Um, we want to do as many as we can and we want to make our lives count. We want to start off proper in the name of Allah, to be nefisant, the merciful. I bear witness that there is no God but Allah. And I bear witness that Muhammad Ibn Abdullah is his messenger. We in the nation of Islam thank Allah for his many, many blessings. And we thank Allah for appearing to us in the person of Master Fahd Muhammad, the Mahdi, the long awaited Mahdi of the Muslims. We also thank Allah for him raising from among us a divine leader, teacher, and guide, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, the eternal leader of the nation of Islam. We thank Allah for him making the most honorable Elijah Muhammad his messenger Messiah and really the Jesus to the world today. And lastly, but surely not least, our Redeemer, my Redeemer, my Savior today, the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan, we thank Allah and I thank Allah for that man that was prepared to do exactly what he did for me and us and what he's being used right now to do for the whole world and that is to guide us into the purity of in fullness of God's message in ministry. So we thank Allah for making the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan his divine warner and his divine comforter and his divine spirit in human form that gives us access to a pure comprehensive knowledge of Allah and all of his servants. So we like to thank them and thank Allah mainly and greet you with the nation of Islam's greeting words of paradise and peace in the name of Allah and his servants. It's in their names that we greet you. Assalamu alaikum. This video is a video that uh, I have no notes for. All praise is due to Allah. I don't really want to just say no notes, but the notes are written in my mind and in my heart by the grace of Almighty God Allah. But I did not bring my table down. And the reason I didn't do it, my daughter Zariah is here and she's uh, looking over the video. And I'm always thankful for her and all the righteous that help with the work of Allah. I want to give a shout out to my family, my wife, Rhoda, my son, Jabril, and all the people uh, that Allah blesses me to have in my life to sharpen me up. And I pray to be able to return the favor and sharpen all who I love up in the name of Allah. So under normal circumstances, I would have my desk here and I might even have a couple little uh, scriptures to touch on or notes or whatever. But I noticed the last time we did these videos, Ariah, it came out so strong with no notes, but just a strong desire for, for right and not a desire to show off or anything like that, but a desire to serve Allah by serving his people. Jesus said it in the scripture, when I was hungry, you didn't feed me. When I was naked, you didn't clothe me. And when I was in prison, you didn't come to see me or cater to me. And his disciples asked, when did these things take place? When were you in prison? When were you hungry? And when were you out of doors? were naked and we didn't cater to you. He said, if you haven't done it for the least of these, my brethren, you have not done them unto me. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan is in the same mindset right now, the mindset of Almighty God Allah, when we don't know how to treat our fellow brothers and sisters, the way we treat the ones who we recognize as the saviors of the world, then we really don't recognize Allah or the saviors of the world. So I just want to share that because when I'm in, my, in the presence of my daughter, 
my son or whoever is feeling the spirit that Allah is putting on, on us, then whenever we go through, whenever I'm blessed to feel that feeling, I'm always able to recognize others who are sharing that same sentiment. So I just want to share that with you, Zariah, and let you know that I always feel so honored when you're in my presence, my daughter, and I always know that the video is going to go really strong when you're around. Even though Allah is the best of planners, it'll go strong with, with you, without you, or with me, or without me, right? Because Allah is the one who's going to make his ultimate aim fulfill with or without us. So with that being said, I'm just thankful and privileged and humbled to be able to be a little humble helper in the cause of Islam. So the name of this video family, praise be to Allah, is how will we know? And I stopped it right there. How will we know? I like short titles, but it was a scripture that uh, inspired me to come up with that title. Uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 14 and 15. Let's go to it. When we go to the scriptures, it always gets it sparking. Even though I have things in mind already that I want to share, and I'm thankful to Allah that he put it there for me to touch on. And then we'll close out because we're not going to drag it out. But I'm thankful when that feeling hits us that we just stop what we're doing and we go ahead and get started. Our sister Helen, we went to her gymnasium today in Moss number 12, powerful sister. And our student regional minister, Rodney, gave some very, very spiritual and touching words about our sister who really reminded me of our, your grandmother, my mother, a, a quiet giant who just did great things in a humble way. That is Sister Helen. And I was so thankful to be able to have, to be able to go to her Janazza and, and, and see her off properly and, and give the salams to her family. And man, Allah couldn't have gave us a better day. It was not a cloud in the sky. And uh, we even noticed there was no chemtrails in the sky. It seemed like Allah just held all that back today. And uh, I believe our sister was, uh, we sent her off the way she would want to be sent off perfectly. So all praise is due to Allah for that. Mm -hmm. Well, we're uh, Romans chapter 10, verse 14 and 15. It says here, Paul talking to the Romans, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? Now take note and remember, this is the King James Version. But verse 15 says, and how shall they preach except they be sent? Let me read that again. And how shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace mm, and bring glad tidings of good things. So you can easily replace that word peace, even Christians accept this logic, with Islam. So it would read how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of Islam, right? But that scripture was taught to us by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad through the honorable minister Lord Farrakhan. I remember hearing as a young man, the honorable minister Lord Farrakhan quote this scripture in many lectures. How will they know unless they have a teacher and how will they have a teacher unless one be sent? Well, what really is being said here, family? Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, through the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan today, teaches us that we have many, many wise teachers today. We have many reverends. We have many 
ministers and we have many imams and sheikhs to teach us. You know, we have rabbis and scholars and historians to teach us what they think is right. And some are so evil or wicked, can't leave them out. The false prophets, they teach in a way where they want to change the truth of God into a lie as Paul charges some with in this book right here, the book of Romans. For all those who have never seen or uh, heard us go to this scripture, you may be looking at this video or this page for the first time. We always welcome you, but we never feel like we cannot revisit a scripture because you never know who's hearing for the first time. But look at what Paul says to those people who may not be doing it by mistake. People who may not be teaching wrong by mistake. You know, some people are intentionally teaching wrong and that's what Paul is talking. These are the type of people that Paul is talking to in this particular verse here, chapter one, Romans, verse 25. He says, well, let's go to verse 24. Wherefore, God also gave them up to unclean, uh, uh, uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts. Let me read it again. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. It's a lot in those two verses, right? Well, Allah is making it clear that he has detached his spirit from these false prophets and allow them, whenever you're detached from Allah, which is pure and holy, the, the only reality other than right is wrong. The only thing that is, the only reality other than holy would be uncleanliness or sin, right? Mm -hmm. So when you are detached from what is holy, then you fall all into what is unclean. So it also says that these people would change the truth of Allah, God, into a lie. And what would that look like? Well, that would look like the rituals of paganism. It's just some examples. The rituals of paganism being used to describe something holy. Any work of Jesus the Christ would be a holy work if Allah allowed Jesus to be crucified, like the book of Psalms chapter 22 prophesies of, Isaiah 53 alludes to this same type of suffering. And Jesus on the cross, uh, or some say the torture state, being permitted by Allah to go through that for a particular reason, one being us knowing, you know, the price of redemption, not just to ask for forgiveness, ask for grace, but know that, like it says in the Holy Quran 29, does man think in the name of Allah to be beneficent and merciful, does man think that he would be left alone on saying we believe and not be tried? And how Allah says, surely, or indeed, we try those before you so that we can see the truthful ones from the phonies. So Jesus says in Matthew 16, verse 24, if any man would be my disciple, he must deny himself, pick up his cross and follow me. And the next verse, which would be 25 says, whoever will try to save his life will lose it, but whoever gives it will receive it. And that is the life of a Muslim, who, which means total submission to the will of God. And when we submit our will to do the will of Allah, of course, we enter into his peace. So of course, peace 
would be the fruit of obedience. And this is why both definitions are correct. But this life of a Muslim, and the most honorable Elijah Muhammad said in this monumental book, which is right up here, message to the black man, that a real Muslim is a Christian and a real Christian is a Muslim. So the real religion, of course, being the religion of treating others the way you want to be treated, doing unto others as you would have others do unto you, the fair and just religion of Allah. Oh man, Allah speaks of it in the Holy Quran, chapter two, verse 62, that all who believe and do good, believe in the last days and does good, they will get their reward from their Lord and will not have to grieve. So Allah doesn't trip over religion. People who have a teaspoon of knowledge, our student regional minister Rodney says, a teaspoon of knowledge, we are the ones who trip over religion. But Allah recognizes the principles that undergird all these religions, the principles that never change, the principles that unite us all. That is the right religion and anything else would be us following the uncleanliness of our own lustful hearts and desires, wanting with the mindset of Cain, the Cainistic mindset to have it our way instead of Allah's way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one, glory be to Allah the most high, the one we serve and worship. We sometimes can let our own lust get in the way and block us from the true worship of the true God. So with that, Paul is recognizing that we would get caught up like this and we would come with these twisted uh religions even, or these practices of these good name religions but with a bad practice. So what does turning God's truth into a lie look like? And what does a twisted up ritual that's connected to these religions look like? It would look like a religion or a ritual called Easter to dirty up a practice of death in the old self, taking off the old self and putting on the new self and the real spiritual resurrection of dying in the old self and being reborn in a new self in a new life, a life that's filled with the perfect spirit of God that we can grow into his perfection stage by stage, all right? Well, we would end up with a religion that would produce rituals, and we're not going to belabor this point at all, excuse me, but I'm giving examples of that term Easter, and Easter being a pagan religion, or I keep saying religion, but a ritual, and even with the Christians today, they recognize that that that, that uh, name is a pagan name. It represents the worship of the sun. And if you slow down the word Easter, which we know comes from a Phoenician goddess, Ishtar. But if you look at the name itself, you're really worshiping the star that rises from the east. And we know that the star that appears to rise from the east is the sun. And we know that the day, the Sabbath day was the Saturday, the sixth day or the seventh day, that seventh day, excuse me, was on Saturday before they changed the calendar and made the seventh day Sunday to be more in line with sun worship. Mm -hmm. So you end up with East Star Sunday worship. <laughs> so even in this King James Version where it talks about or uses the term Easter, all the other new translations change the word Easter 
and they put it fill in the blank or try to correct the tampering with the word. Uh, and I have it right here with the word Passover. Well, if we're Christians and we're not even Catholic Christians, a lot of our people are Baptist Christians. That's what my family was. Baptized. And I'm looking at a scripture right here. Acts chapter 11, verse 16. It says, then remember I, the word of the Lord, how that he said, John indeed baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Now, one thing about your brother, Brother Zebulon, I have two problems on this, <laughs> on this page that we're looking at right here. You know, I love red print Bibles because this is what Jesus was saying to uh, Peter. And this is what Luke is responding to or reminding us that Jesus said, because we know that the book of Luke is written by, the book of Acts, that is, is written by Luke. And we know Luke was not an apostle or an apostle. He was not even a, 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 a disciple. But he was a scholar. Luke was a physician. He was someone that had a clear understanding of the scriptures. He was filled up with the spirit of God. But that's another lecture for another time. This back page of the final call is so clear when it says that we, the Muslims in the nation of Islam, believe in the truth of the Bible. But we believe that it has been tampered with and must be reinterpreted so that man will not be snared by the falsehoods that have been added to it. So we're just, as soon as we open a book, we see a couple things. This is not even my topic of discussion, but we want to clear some of this up before we move further. Is that all right? Yes. So, I want to read chapter 12, also, verse 4. Look what it says about this Easter word that, that is being used in King James, the King James Version. Verse 4 says, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to the four, I want to make sure I pronounce this right. <laughs> they use these words, man. Hold on, family. And it's, the definition is a set of four people or things. These are officers. Quaternions. Quaternions. The quaternions. <laughs> so it says, and he delivered him to four quaternions. The quaternions. This is four soldiers, right, to keep him and intended after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Now, they use words that nobody uses so that they, they can take, they can deflect and take your mind off the fact that this word, this pagan word is really not supposed to be there. It has nothing to do with Brother Zebulon, has nothing to do with the nation of Islam or any Muslim. This is a problem or tampering with from their own scholars, family. And uh, also, like I said, in verse 16, it says here, dealing with that baptism, because that's what we started off as. We started off as Baptists. There's nothing wrong with being baptized, especially if you're baptized properly today. Not the baptism of John, which is with water. That is a ritual. And that ritual is a good ritual, but it symbolizes, some, symbolizes something even greater and even more good. It symbolizes the washing of the old and the renewal of the same human being that would be washed clean in the name of God. Washed in the name of the God who raised up the Christ and gave us the Holy Spirit. And this is my beef <laughs> with that word ghost because we know that a ghost is not a spirit. The Quran says that Allah strengthened Jesus with the 
gospel and the Holy Spirit. But the Quran wouldn't say that he strengthened Jesus with a Holy Ghost because we know a ghost represents a person who was alive and died and became stuck in between realms of the living and the dead. And you can't really see them. You see a transparent uh, uh, illusion of the person who used to be here, but he himself is not here. So all he can do is knock things over and drag chains in your attic and all this Hollywood madness. But that's connected to ghosts. But the spirit is the very essence of what moves the flesh. The greatest part of the man or the woman is the spirit. And it says, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Of course, it's not talking about a ghost, but it's talking about the spirit, the Holy Spirit of Almighty God. So, with me saying all of this, let's see if we can clear some of this up or prove some of this, family. We have many Bibles here. I can grab almost either one. The Jehovah Witness Bible. We can grab the uh, NIV, which is the New International Version. We're probably not going to use it because the words are so small. <laughs> Your brother's over 50. We have the Mac Author, which is the ESV, the English Standard Version, I believe it is. Yes, that's exactly what it is. So we can turn to Acts chapter 11, verse uh, 16, and see what happens with this ghost. Because I don't want you to think that I'm changing anything or reinterpreting anything. And this writing is not too much bigger, but we're going to go to that NLT, the New Language Translation, as well before we move on. We're going to read these two scriptures to see what happens with this Holy Ghost and even this East Star worship. Okay? So here we are, Acts chapter 11. All right, come on now. We in 10, chapter 11, verse 16. Boy, this is some small writing, but I can read it. Look what it says, family. And I remember the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way. Who was I that I could stand in God's way, right? When they heard these things, they fell silent. And they glorified God saying thus, oh, they glorified God saying, then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. See, Allah is no respecter of persons. But of course, it's to the Jew first. To the Gentile second. So our book says, message to the black man in America, like Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10, go ye not in the way of the Gentiles, or in any city of the Samaritan, enter ye not. Go ye rather to the lost sheep that's in the house of Israel. And as you go to them, prophesy and teach them that the kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, cleanse the leper and do all of these great things for them first. But of course, at the end, it said, take the gospel throughout the whole world. But Jesus himself, like the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, only taught his own people according to what is written. But it's up to us to be able to be mature spiritually enough to know that we should always treat, like the minister says, the whole human family, all who uh, strive to do better, strive to submit their will to do the will of God. Look at all people who do that as being our brothers and sisters in faith, even the Europeans. But of course, we know that they would be our brothers and sisters in the, in the faith, but never by nature.
All right, family? Again, a topic for another time. But when you look at these things, man, oh man, we want to move, but it's so much tampering that we can't just skip over these things. So that was Acts chapter 11, verse 16. And um, I want to jump to Acts right in the same chapter, chapter 11, verse, what is this, 26. Now look at what 26 says. This is when the, one of the few times the name Christian can you line yourself up with me so I can kind of look right at you? Thank you. Okay. Verse 26 is one of the few times where the word Christian is being used. It says here, and when he had found him, he brought him unto Antioch. And it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people. And this is the primary part here for this particular tampering in this verse, which is really truth telling, but look at what it says. And the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. Okay. So this was the day of Pente Pentecost at Antioch. And what we were talking about with religion and how people put their own spin on things you end up with a Pentecostal type of Christian. That's what happens when you start naming religions after prophets, family. So if you have Christ, the anointed one, and he leaves and then the Romans name the people who follow Christ Christians, you end up with that name that was not given by Allah, but given by man breaking down into sex and parties, a section over here and a section over there, a party over here and a party over there. So you end up with a Christian who may call himself a Catholic type of Christian. You end up with a Christian who may call himself a Protestant. He protests against all of these uh, pagan practices that they want to merge all together so that they can have the best of both worlds some of the paganism and some of the spiritualism or the spiritual of God, right? Mm -hmm. And then you'll have another group protesting against them. And before you know it, it's breaking down and breaking down and breaking down. Two pages I'm looking at. I'm looking at four religions on two pages, right? I'm looking at the book of Acts, chapter 11, verse 16, talking about baptism, a good practice that represents, like John was saying, in the book of John, in the book of Matthew, where they asked John, who are you and why are you out here baptizing? John said, I'm baptizing with water. I'm doing what you can do. In the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Spirit. But when he comes, he won't baptize like that. He's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. But the good ritual that was given by John is a ritual of water baptism representing water being a rejuvenator. Just as water rejuvenates the flesh, the power, the wisdom, and the will of Allah is rejuvenating to your mind. Mm. But it doesn't mean to take a religion and make a religion called Baptist Christian. That's the point that I'm getting at. So now that's a religion. It ain't good enough to be a Christian, but you got to be a Baptist Christian. Mm -hmm. I went to Union Baptist. It was a great church, but it's nothing wrong, like I said, in what we teach with baptism. But when you start separating yourselves from other brothers and even going as far as saying that we're not equally yoked because our religion doesn't line up. You're a Muslim. I'm a Christian. He's a Baptist. He's a this and a that. When you start that, that is not good. What is good with this verse? The baptism of Jesus. When your mind is being washed and drenched and your mind is being submerged in the word of God. So when we open up, every time we open up and we have the time, when we don't do the short version of uh, uh, in the name of Allah, the beneficent, the merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah and Muhammad is his messenger, the short version, 
But when we go and have time to go a little further, that is a mild baptism spiritually right there for you to be baptized in the name of Allah who appeared in the person of Master Far Muhammad, the one who raised up who the Bible calls the son of man, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad and the honorable minister Lord Farrakhan who is functioning as a physical human, Holy Spirit of truth, who is physically guiding us into all truth. Mm -hmm. This is a submerging, I see the time, a submerging of, this is a submerging of the Holy Spirit, of the word of God to our minds to understand the phases, the three uh, phases of God's work and stages of God's work. Allah himself came, first stage. Allah raised one from among us, a second stage. And now here we are with this final stage, really, of God's holy activity. The Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan driving, driving all the stages home and making clear what all means so that we can close out with the foundation and let that number four, which is us, start this foundation being built for God's kingdom to be built right here on earth. How that sound, family? Yeah. Oh, praise is due to Allah. So check this. So later on, it says here in verse 26, and when he had found them, he brought him to Antioch and it came to pass that a whole year they assembled themselves with the church and taught much people and the disciples were called Christians. First in Antioch, right? And now we're in verse, uh, well, not even verse, chapter 12, verse two or verse four. And when he had apprehended him, right? Mm -hmm. Well, let's go to verse one on down. It says, now about that time, Herod the king stretched forth his hands to vex certain of the church. And he killed James, the brother of John, with the sword. Now look at that. When you're looking at the time that Jesus was explaining these things, the Holy Quran chapter 23 verse 50 says, Jesus, uh, son of Mary, Mary and his, Jesus and his mother Mary was a sign. We know he was a sign because Jesus talked about his time not being uh, here yet. He said, my time has not yet come. More than once, on more than one, one occasion, Jesus was constantly talking about how his time had not yet come. He urged his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. Okay. With all of that, and he said that more than once, Jesus was recognizing that he was a sign, meaning he was pointing to the fulfillment, the one who would come at the end, like it says in Galatians 4.4, 4, the fullness of time to, to fulfill all of these things. The one who would come with the power to crush the wicked, the Christ, not Jesus the prophet with the gospel, like Moses the prophet with the Torah, but Jesus the Christ that would usher in a whole new world and a new kingdom. That one who would crush this wicked world and this government and set up a new government of uh, righteousness and peace. The one who was prophesied in John chapter nine, no, Isaiah chapter nine. All praise is due to Allah. All of these things are clear now because the Christ has come, all right? The Messiah is here. So it says here, verse two, and he killed James, the brother of John with the sword. So they were getting killed. We can't look at that and say that's a fulfillment. When Jesus himself was killed, according to the Christian, they say he was resurrected, but that's spiritually interpreted wrong. But we're not going to get into that. But nevertheless, they believe that Jesus died and came back. But when he came back, did he set up the kingdom? No, he did not. Did he guide us into all truth? 
Well, no, he did not. This, he started it, but did we get into all truth? Were we in all truth 2,000 years ago? Let's be real and honest with ourselves, family. We could not have been. Look what happened after Jesus was resurrected to show you that that resurrection could not have been the resurrection that we would be looking for as the fulfillment of scripture. To be resurrected and we spook it out and say that Jesus died and went to hell and he killed sin and death and, went and came back and then ascended and went up into the clouds with Allah. Well, with all of the dramatics, right? What is the sign of him killing Jesus, that is, sin and death. Number one, did we stop sinning? No. Number two, did we stop dying? No. According to this scripture right here, John, you know, it says right here that James, the brother of John, was killed. And then it says, and because he saw it, because he saw it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to take Peter also. Then were the days of the unleavened bread, right? And when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison. Talk about Peter. Because Peter, they say, the tradition says he was hung upside down. He didn't want to disgrace his Lord with being crucified like Jesus was. So they say that they crucified Peter upside down. So death was not destroyed. So that it has to have a better, a, a more accurate meaning. All right. So it says he was put in prison and delivered him to the four uh, cordonins, right? Or quaternions of soldiers to keep him. Mm, I hate that word intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people, okay? Well, more tampering, because today, my aunt, my beautiful Aunt Teresa corrected me last a couple weeks ago when Easter came, which is around springtime always. That's another uh, topic for another day. But my aunt corrected me and said that we don't say Easter anymore. We say Happy Resurrection Day. No more Happy Easter. I said I didn't get the memo. And I'm not making fun, but I'm just looking at the King James Version. Use this word Easter. But here with this EST, the English Standard Version, let's see what they say on verse 4. It says, and when he had seized him, talking about Peter, and put him in prison, delivering him over Look at this, to four squads of soldiers. Don't that sound better? Make me feel like I can read a little better, right? Mm -hmm. Four squads of soldiers to guard him, intending after the Passover to bring him out to the people, right? So Peter was kept in prison, but earnest prayers for him was made to God by the church. Okay. Well, of course, you know, the NIV would say the same thing, but it still doesn't say resurrection day. You know, something's wrong. If you're not a Jew, if you're not into a religion called Judaism, then why would it say Passover here? We do understand that it was Passover time, but at the same time, Easter was thrown in there. I even have an NKJV. And an NKJV, for those who don't know what an NKJV is, and we are a halfway mark family, a little past it, but we're going to move right along. But man, I don't feel right. I would feel like I'm doing you a disservice if I did not share what I'm showing you. And what I'm showing you is nothing more than a dirty hand, all in the word of God, tampering with this book to the point where we are taught by the Musa of Elijah Muhammad, he even referred to this book, he called it a poison book, because when you do not have the proper interpretation, you can get poisoned instead of healed with this uh, glorious revelation. 
that the most honorable Elijah Muhammad used to establish a whole nation of obedient people to God. A nation of Islam, and he used the Bible to do it all the way up into the 60s, we're taught. Now, here we are in Acts. I just want to see. These same scriptures in the book of this, this New King James Version. Because it might say Resurrection Day if Allah doesn't stop these things <laughs> and continue to expose the tampering of these things, right? Mm -hmm. So the verse that I just read was uh, Acts chapter 12, verse 4. And I'll read it here where it says, I'll start at 3. Keeping the prison. Now, where is three? Okay, here we go. Verse three. And because he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded further to seize Peter also. This is after killing James, the brother of John. Now, it was during the days of unleavened bread. So when he had arrested him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads of soldiers to keep him, intending to bring him before the people after Passover. So it's also in the King James Version here. All right. So when you go back to verse 11, dealing with this holy Ghost, the Holy Ghost is not even used in the New King James Version. Mm -hmm. So what happened? How did King James come back and rewrite a more accurate understanding of what we would refer to as the Holy Ghost? For those who love to say the Holy Ghost, and like I said, just study family. That's homework for you to look at the difference between the word ghost and spirit, Right? Verse 11, verse 16. We don't want to continue to belabor this. We want to move a little further than this, but I have two more scriptures here dealing with these religions. Uh, chapter 11, verse 16. And you think I'm exaggerating. Look, in, look how small these words are. <laughs> it, can't be, it can't just be me. Okay. Verse 16 says, then I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John indeed baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Right? That sounds so much better and that is so much more accurate and that's why they saw fit to change all the Bibles. The word Holy Ghost is not in this Bible anymore. So I want you to understand that the word Easter was taken out. The word Holy Ghost was taken out because it, was, it is not a proper translation. All right, family? So when you have a twisted interpretation, then you'll end up with a Protestant, a Catholic, a Christian, a Baptist, a Pentecostal, because they all of these things, it says right here that they were called Christians first and Antioch, which was the day of Pentecost. All right? We don't need all these religions. All we need is the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and what I used to call affectionately the black man's Bible because this book made me learn how to read the Bible. All right? So all praise is due to Allah. I think I would have been a lot safer going to the William Tinsdale translation or version because those words are bigger. <laughs> all right? But moving right along, family, we want to just go ahead and deal with, with some more uh, clear interpretation as we close up and we can start winding down with the primary scripture that started us up of course how will we know if they have a teacher and how how will we know unless they have a teacher and how will we have a teacher unless one be sent and those are the two questions that I have up there of course we would need not just any old Scholar, like we just hope, I hope that we were able to demonstrate. But we would really need a spiritual man who Allah 
would raise up for us. And he raises men like this up right from among us. Not from Al-Azhar, not from Cambridge, but from Allah himself. And that's what we have with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. The Bible says, who is this without letters, but yet he's learned. It's not about how smart the man is and how many, even how many languages he speaks, as long as the language he speaks is from Allah. The interpretation is from Allah. And that's what we have today. So that when we take the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad, we can recognize things that scholars are confusing. And this is the way I wanna close this glorious video out. I wanna close it out. You don't have to, you know, but I wanna close it out with another example that should not take as long as the other one. Because I didn't remember that all of that was right in the same vicinity of the scriptures, chapter 11 and chapter 12 of the book of Acts. But I want to close out this video with a scholarly uh, misinterpretation that separates believers in God. We have our Hebrew Israelite brothers. And they look at this that I want to point to, the Holy Spirit of Allah is pointing me in this direction to deal with the Jacob and Esau story and tap into that a little bit about the symbolism that twist the understanding and have us believing in two different things, talking about the same thing. Of course, we are taught that 6,000 years ago could not have been the beginning. 6,000 years ago could not have been the beginning of the heavens and the earth in the beginning of the original people. But it would be the beginning of a new people that existed in the genealogy of the original people. And a fallen one would take the people of Allah and graft out of the people of Allah a new people who would lose the soul in the grafting process all right so you would have a people who would be born in the image and after the likeness of the original people that is your genesis 126 we gave them power we gave them dominion and the fallen one even gave them orders to be fruitful to multiply and replenish the earth, meaning refill and subdue, meaning bring into bondage. Mm. The people who were already here. And we from being reduced to dust, like it says in the second chapter, chapter two, verse seven, that the Lord God would have to form us from the dust and breathe, breathe into our nostrils the breath of life that we would become living souls again because we would be reduced to dust, dead people who in a dead state would just continue to help them subdue us and rule over us. They could not rule over us if we did not allow them to from our own ignorance, okay? So this grafted or wild olive branch that in the book of Romans, it also talks about this wild olive branch being detached from the natural branches that had a root. So this Jacob and Esau story would talk about in the book of Genesis uh, chapter 25, one child being born red and hairy all over. Roots, a branch that had a root all over the planet Earth, 196,940,000 square miles of this Earth, you will always find original people here and not just there at like, like Columbus, only being there for a couple thousand years or more, but for trillions of years, deeply rooted in this Earth, red Earth, you know, the red sand, or not the sand, but the soil of the Earth, like it says here, I'll keep this picture up, Alhambra, the red one, 
because it's really a clear palace that reflects the red earth, the red uh, uh, soil of the earth, and it reflects it. So that dark red, you know what I mean? The reddish people would be the older people. That's what it says when Rebecca, from that area, the Middle East, Rebecca, it said, uh, which the Quran refers to as Becca, short for Mecca, the people of Mecca, the original people in that area, we're taught was uh, uh, reduced to dust. So when you say Jacob and Esau, it's two people that's inside that original person. So we are the people that two different people came from. It says it again in the book of Acts. Out of one blood came all men. And I believe that's Acts chapter 17, verse 26. Out of one blood came all men. So Esau is that one blood that all other men came from. His brother Jacob, he didn't, they didn't say nothing about him being red or hairy all over. It just said that he came out holding on to the heel of his older brother, representing these new people because it was the new mindset of this fallen one who would make a new people. And this new people uh, are the people of Jacob, the Europeans, we're taught. So Jacob... Or Israel represents the new people, the younger people, the younger brother, Jacob. And Esau represented the older people, the original people, which is us. Okay, family? So, of course, the Hebrew Israelites say just the opposite. They say that because, of course, God said that he loved Jacob and hated Esau. Nobody wants to be the one that Allah hated. So they say Esau represents the Edomites or the Europeans, right? And of course, the 12 tribes of Israel and Jacob represents us. Well, we are thankful to Allah that we are not arguing. We are explaining and we are clarifying and we are building bridges today with the interpretation that comes from Allah through the Christ, the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad and the Honorable Minister Lord Farrakhan today. Which one is it? That's the question. And this is how we're going to close. Well, a lot of times when we're confused or if we're disagreeing with one another, when you say, well, which one is it? It's both. <laughs> of course, if Rebecca and uh, Isaac are the parents of Jacob and Esau, right? Then how can we represent, how can we be two different people? Come on now. We would be the same people. All right? So out of one blood came all men. So here we are here. It says, and hath made of one blood all nations of men for, for to dwell on all the face of the earth. All right, I'll stop right there. Out of one blood came all men. So it's no such thing as being mixed. You can tamper and change or graft and make a new man. So you're really only dealing with two different races, the original race, the indigenous, the, uh, the natives of the earth, you know, or you're dealing with people that come from the indigenous or the natives of the planet Earth, okay? The original people, the aboriginal people, the people from the beginning. Well, not the beginning of this book, but from the beginning of creation, right? So all praise due to, to Allah for that, but back to Genesis 25, where you're dealing with two peoples, right? And Esau himself, is the older people, and here is the proof family, Esau being the older brother represents Adam. Adam and Edom, because that's what happened, you know, when Jacob wrestled with the angels, 
Jacob's name was changed from Jacob to Israel. And when you see Esau, Esau becomes the father of that name Edom or the Edomites. So you have Israelites, the Jews that represent the Jews and the Christians, and then you have the Edomites that represent the Muslims. So Edom, when you really look at the word Edom, E-D-O-M, that's a variation of the word Adam. So this Bible is talking about a new Adam and talking about an old Adam. And we know Adam means man. This is my final thought as we close. We implore you to continue to read chapter 103 of this book, Message to the Black Man, to go even more in detail of where this new people came from. This is not racism. This is realism. So Edom is Adam and Adam is man. And we have righteous man by nature. That's the original people. And we have another man who is not so righteous. He is wicked by nature. Jesus talks about that in John chapter three, verse three on down where Nicodemus, a Jew, an Ashkenazi Jew, who was asking Jesus, how can he have eternal life? And there is no eternal life for a grafted people. The only eternal life they can experience would be living a good life and the goodness that they do in that life live on forever. But far as them naturally, that's why they can never be our brothers and sisters by nature because they don't have the soul and the melanin and the natural qualities that Allah put in his original people to be able to live forever. But as long as God's original people are here, I mean, as long as the earth is here, God's original people will be here. Jesus says in that same chapter, his answer to uh, Nicodemus was, and I have two more scriptures before we close. We're going to close out with uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, dealing with this Adam, this last man, because Adam is really who Jesus is. The Holy Quran points to that, that the only difference really, it is, is no difference when we talk about who Jesus is, who did not have an earthly father, according to the way it's written. And some say because of that, he's God. The Holy Quran clears that up and says the way Jesus is styled in scripture is in the way of Adam, a man who did not have a mother or a father, but how many people are worshiping Adam as God? And if you're not going to worship Adam as God, why would you worship Jesus as God? Okay, so here we are in John chapter three, verse three. Look what it says. Jesus answered and said unto him. And this is Nicodemus he's talking to. Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus saith unto him, and Nicodemus was a scholar, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, not ghost, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. So the original man was created by the spirit of Almighty God Allah. Mm. And these new people were made by a fallen one who was made or created by the spirit of Almighty God Allah. So Yaqub or Jacob does not have the nature that his grafted people have. All right. So we say in the supreme wisdom that uh, Yaqub was an original man. Right. right. And he is the father of the devil. Right? His nature is different. 
So verse six says, okay, verse seven, Jesus says, marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. It's just terminology he's saying. Don't marvel over that. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. So he's likening this analogy of how the wind, you can feel where it's coming from. It's coming from the east. It's going to the west or wherever it's coming from. But you don't know exactly. You can't pinpoint the beginning of where this wind is going. You cannot pinpoint where, where it's coming from or where it's going. So it is with the original people. You do not know where we come from. I heard back in 1994, student regional minister Rodney was doing a lecture called The Black Man's History. And he said that the Europeans are in no position to write the original people a birth certificate because you were nowhere around when we were born. So you are not in a position to write us a birth certificate. And since you're not eternal, you're not going to be around to write us a death certificate. Just like the wind, you don't know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with the people of the spirit. And all they can do is spiritually accept the truth, but physically they can never be you know, our physical brothers or in, 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 in uh, nature, but only spiritually. Hopefully that makes sense, family. So with that, we're going to close out with this last scripture, dealing with this last Adam. This is 1 Corinthians chapter 15. As we close this lecture, we hope and pray, mainly pray that you got something out of this. And of course, we ask you to, we implore you to check out the page and just browse through the page. There's a lot on it, family. But we're going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 45. Look what it says. And so it is written, the first man, Adam, was made a living soul. I love these words. And the last Adam was made a quickening spirit. See? The last Adam is a result of all that the first Adam had to go through. So this is a long, drawn-out process to perfection. Jesus says in Matthew chapter 5, verse 48, Be ye perfect, even as your Father who is in heaven is perfect. Perfection takes a long time. It's a stage by stage until we reach eventual perfection. So, but the quickening spirit is what happened when Master Farah Muhammad and the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad met and started this that we call the Nation of Islam. All praise is due to Allah. So it says, how be it, meaning however, that was not the first which is spiritual, but that which is natural and afterward that which is spiritual. So the natural man of the earth had to fall before the spiritual man can really give real definition to the natural bodies that God would breathe his spirit into so that the last Adam can stand indefinitely and eternally. I hope you're following. So verse 47 says, the first man is of the earth, earthy, red, with deep roots, right? The second man is the Lord from heaven. That's Jesus, of course. As is the earthly, such are they also that are earthly. And as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthly or the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. He's killing that whole thing right there of somebody floating up into heaven, right? Neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. I'll stop right there, right? And it goes into the whole thing. It goes all the way to 55, but it talks about the immortal 
or the mortal taking off of the immortal taking off the immortal. I'm sorry, the mortal taking off the mortal and putting on the immortal. Corruption taking off corruption and put on incorruption. And that's what we are going to close out and that's what we should be doing. We're going to land this plane with that. The renewing process and spiritual work that's being done inside this humble nation, we offer it to you and we continue to try to internalize it ourselves so that we can be better examples for you. So with that being said, we want to close this video out, inviting you also to your local mosque in Philadelphia. It's 5727 Germantown Avenue. Uh, we implore you to come on out on Wednesday nights, every Wednesday at 7 o'clock, every Sunday at 11 o'clock, and fellowship with your brothers. We leave you just as we came before you with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum.